Professor Biotti, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I'm really interested in hearing more about your work while at Microsoft looking at hospital readmissions. Can you tell me more about it? So that was a project that uh, we started uh, collaborating with a hospital in Washington, D.C., and that hospital's data was being managed by a startup that Microsoft had acquired, so that's how we got to work with that data, and it was a great experience because we were working directly with the physicians, and we said we have machine learning experience, and what are the problems that you're interested in? And they suggested, here is one problem, it's a quality metric, improvement. They don't want the patients that are being discharged to come back in a short amount of time. Right. It's most of the time because something could have been done to, uh, at the, in the first visit to stop this from happening. And sometimes it's just complete surprise and those are, you can't do anything about those. But the first type, if one can find out what caused this or uh, is there anything I can do about uh, this at the beginning, it would be very helpful. So what we did, we used machine learning methods on top of uh, electronic medical records that the hospital had uh, to predict which patients are at the highest risk of being readmitted. And uh, it would help them to allocate their resources more efficiently because uh, if I know, if I have only, say, resources for 10% of the patients and these resources could impact uh, their risk, then it's, it would be great to find out which are those 10% of the patients. Of course, it would be ideal if I have resource for everyone, but sometimes there's not enough resource. And the resources, examples of resource could be follow-up phone calls, it might not be as much limited resource, but it could be medication reconciliation, it could be uh, send the pharmacist to patients home and check their meds. These are the things that are very expensive, mm -hmm. but they could be very effective actually. And uh, if I know who to allocate these resources to, it would be great. And so were you mostly looking at post-discharge interventions so, or even ones right during the hospital Great stay? question. Uh, they, they are interested in both uh, generally because sometimes in the middle of a hospitalization you want to decide should I educate them about the symptoms they should be watching when they are going home? Should I teach them about their medications? Because mm -hmm. in hospitals nurses take care of everything. The moment the patient goes home they're 100% in charge. Right and it's a difficult transition. So making sure they get a soft landing is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, education in the hospital can be helpful. There are studies around this. And uh, there are other things that can be done. And have you found that patients found these interventions helpful? So what we did, we, we built a tool that mm -hmm. does the prediction. Mm -hmm. And based on those predictions, the, it's the care team that decides which interventions to find to choose. Now, the tool that actually we built is now running in a lot of hospitals, but we, I don't know how exactly they are applying those interventions and what are the benefits they're getting. But what we did an analysis ourselves retrospectively on past data that studied, okay, if I combine these interventions, with the risk prediction, will I be able to save cost while reducing the readmission? And the answer was positive. We could save 10% of the costs while improving the readmission rates a lot. And that was a more of a good evidence why mm -hmm. hospitals were interested uh, to <coughs> adopt the tool. And in basic terms, how do you assess the risk? How do you predict that? So it's more of a, there are many ways to think about it. Uh, in machine learning, uh, we, we think like there's a Bayesian way of thinking about it. So what is the probability of risk at readmission? So readmission is an event. It's a binary event. Either a patient is going to be readmitted or not. Right. And then you can think about it. If I don't have any information, I just look at what's the average readmission rate in the past, past prior information that I have. And in, in this case, it's about 20%, 20% of the patient come back. So that's what I predict as risk. Right. Now, if I have more data elements for all these patients, like what's their age, what's their pri uh, prior diagnosis, the more you add these elements, I can update that probability, the conditional probability, we call it. Like what's the probability of readmission given all those extra variables? And then we can call this the risk. This, this number goes up when the risk is up. The probability gets close to one 
that means the worst case, the patient will be readmitted. Of course, it's usually like a number between, say, 5% to 60%. And the ones that are very high, like around 60%, are really high risk. And your current work is also continuing parts of this? Yes, so right now uh, I work on uh, the, actually it's related to some of the questions you asked. We try to do the prospective analysis to see, in fact, if I implement the system, after a year of using the system, what are the impacts? Are we saving costs? Are we improving patient satisfaction? Uh, are we uh, improving quality metrics the way we expected based on the retrospective analysis? Wow, sounds like a lot of exciting things are coming down the pipeline for you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? I'm very uh, fascinated by this conference. A lot of aspects of big data are being covered, uh, and in particular, their interaction with healthcare. Uh, this is a huge area. It's it's great time, <laughs> great area to work in, and uh, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thanks.